All right, so how do we come up with the formulas that we're gonna to use to check block shear? Well, we're gonna to go to our trusty friends here at AISC in the steel manual. Now, for tension members, we were using chapter D, chapter D for tension members. But block shear is a problem at the connections where we get total member separation. So we're gonna to have to go into chapter J, specifically J uh, 4.3, where we're going to see the block shear strength. You can see there we got this long complicated equation. So let's see where all these different terms in the equation come from. So how does the AISC specification handle block shear? So as we discovered about block shear, um, block shear assumes that we have failure that occurs by rupture on the shear area and we have rupture on the tension area. So again, we said block shear is a combined failure of shear and tension For the tension area, we're very familiar with coming up with the strength and tension. It's going to be very much like our fracture strength. So when we looked at the strength of an element in fracture, we said that that strength was equal to the ultimate stress, F sub u, times whatever the net area was in tension. So in fracture, we call that just A sub N, uh, the net area. Um, in here, in block shear, we added the letter T, meaning just the net tension area, because remember, in block shear, we have both tension and shear, so we need to distinguish between the two different failure surfaces. For shear area, we're also are going to define the strength uh, and again, because we're looking at rupture, we're looking at the ultimate stress in shear. And so I'm just going to call this F sub UV. So this is the ultimate stress of the material when it's in shear. And then like the tension area, we're going to multiply this by the net area in shear. And the little v typically will refer to shear when we're looking in the specification. Let's go ahead and add some notes on these particular variables so that we remember what they are. To come up with the ultimate stress and shear, I want you to remember back to mechanics and materials. When we talked about failure criterion, specifically when we talked about the von Mises failure criterion. So if we took an object that was in pure shear, we would be able to go through it. And if we look at it from uh, the, the von Mises stress standpoint, we would see that Failure in pure shear will occur at a applied force roughly equal to 0.6 of that we of the maximum that we can apply in tension. So the von Mises criterion actually says it's 0.577 times the uniaxial tension stress, um, but we've gone ahead and rounded it up to 0.60. This was also the same uh, value for the uh, stress, allowable stress and shear that we used when we did uh, beam limit states as well, when we looked at beam shear strength. Um, so sometimes if, if you haven't covered beam shear strength in your steel design class uh, yet, you'll see that uh, this variable will come back around. So go ahead and plug that into our strength formula. We now get that uh, at about 0 0.6 times the uniaxial stress, F sub u, uh, is going to be what we use for the ultimate stress and shear, and then we're going to multiply that times our net shear area. 
0.6 f sub u times a n v is when we expect fracture on the shear area. But because connections can get pretty long, we would also be very concerned if our shear area was yielding. So if we had significant amount of stretch on the shear area, that could lead to a uh, member that becomes unusable. So we're going to take this value of 0.6 f sub u times a and v, and we're going to limit it to the shear yield capacity, but on the gross shear area. So that's going to give us 0.6 fy times a g v, which will be our gross shear area. So now we just have to put all of this into one uh, equation. So the equation as it's written in the AISC specification is Rn. Rn is just, you know, the nominal strength for an element. So we can apply this to multiple elements and we can sum it up for the whole member. Um, so basically in this case, Rn uh, is going to become our uh, Pn uh, for our tension member capacity. So we say that the nominal strength is the combination of shear and tension, so that gives us 0.6 f sub u a n v plus u b s f sub u a n t. We'll talk about u b s in a second. We said that this is limited by the shear yield capacity on the gross shear area, so in the specification we're going to take this first half of the equation and say it always has to be less than the shear yield capacity, which is 0.6 f y a g v plus still fracture on the net section, so plus UBS times F sub U times ANT. This is AISC equation J4-5. Um, from the, the specification, we're given that our reduction factor phi is 0 0.75, and we find that this is in accordance with our rupture limit states, so Things like fracture also have 0.75. Lastly, we need to define UBS. UBS is a reduction factor for block shear where the tensile stress is non-uniform. So for most tension members that we're going to come across, uh, members that are in direct tension, UBS is going to be 1.0, so there's no reduction. And we say, so UBS is 1.0 where the tensile stress is uniform. This will pertain to most angle plate tube, even uh, some coked beam connections, and uh, most of any kind of uh, member uh, steel shape that's in direct tension. Times when UBS is taken as 0.5 are for non-uniform stress. I would point you to the AISC commentary to better understand cases where this exists, but a lot of times it happens in a coked beam connection, but where you have two uh, vertical lines of bolts attaching to the connection plate. So let's take a look at the specification. Block shear is found in chapter J. So this is J section four, effective elements, affected elements of members and connecting elements. I uh, will see here rehashed in J 4.1, strength of elements in tension once again, and strength of elements in shear. And we've been through this for kind of our tension member limit states, but this just reiterates what those are. Block shear is a combination of tension and shear so it kind of takes those elements from 1 and 2 and puts them together into J4.3. And you can see here uh, the formula for block shear that we had written previously in our notes. Again, typically UBS will be 1 for most applications, and it says right there to go see the commentary for other cases when UBS is not 1.0. So going into the commentary, it's a good place to go ahead and grab some extra information about block shear so you can go ahead and read uh, kind of the development. But again, uh, block shear failure mode. Uh, also, it needs to be checked around welded connections. So I know we've done some examples for bolted connections, but I did want to 
point out there uh, once more to double check welded connections. Now, uh, if you're in the actual commentary of your manual, I would encourage you to go ahead and sketch, uh, draw right into your manual. So uh, the manual is yours, you wanna be able to use it, so it's good to add little notes in there uh, for yourself at a later time when you're a practicing engineer. I'm just going to better highlight these shaded areas that are drawn in here already. So these are the blocks that we want to check for failure. And uh, then we have cases where UBS equals 1.0. So as we've been over already, this applies to angle connections. It applies to gusset plate connections. Uh, and we're also looking at single row beam end connections or welded beam end connections. But even though we've kind of limited to these cases, um, UBS will equal 1.0 when we have things like channel members in direct tension, maybe a WT member, or even a W shape in direct tension. All of these cases, uh, UBS will be 1.0 in. Uh, below we see uh, the typical case when UBS is 0 0.5. Again, this has to do with a stress gradient on your connection. So you can see in this example where you have a double row beam end connection or any kind of multiple row beam end connection, you have a stress gradient, so therefore UBS is 0 0.5. Finishing out the commentary on section J4, I uh, will see that block shear, even though it's a rupture or tearing phenomenon, uh, not a yielding limit state. Uh, we are concerned with gross yielding on the shear plane, and that was the reason why we included a limit uh, to our rupture uh, strength. So we saw that in the block shear equation. So you're probably wondering, how are you gonna remember that equation for block shear? Well, I've got this awesome tune just for you. Goes a little like this. Block shear, it's another rupture limit state for all tension members. Don't forget to check the connection plates. Block shear, it's in addition to yielding and fracture. It takes into account a combination of shear and tension failure. Block shear. You can find it in chapter J. Block shear. If you don't check it, you will pay. You will pay. Block shear. 0.6 FUANV plus. Block shear. UBS FUANT less than or equal to. Block shear. 0.6 FYAGV plus. Block shear. UBS FUANT. Block shear. All of that times fee. Yeah.